Hi, good to see you back. Today I'll teach you how to count values using the COUNTIF function based on a certain criteria where the criteria range can be dynamic. Here I've got a bunch of sales reps and the softwares that all of them use. Below is another table where I've set up a drop down list in cell B12 and I want to count the number of yeses and noes for that particular software. In this case, access. By the way, notice how I've merged cells B12 and C12. This is just for demonstration purpose so that you can see the formula clearly. In real life situations, I don't recommend using merge and center at all. Anyways, moving ahead, let us use the basic counter formula here in cell B13 to start with. Equals counteth. Let's give it the range, comma, cell A13, bracket close, enter. This formula works perfectly fine, except it's in no way linked to the drop-down list. So even if I select a different software from the drop-down list, it won't affect the formula in any way. So we'll need a function that would return as the column name based on our selection from the drop-down list, and then use that value in the COUNTIF formula to count number of yeses and noes. If you observe the formula carefully, the only thing that is going to change is the column name. For example, if I select publisher from the drop down list, the formula should show G2 to G10 instead of D2 to D10. We will start by using an amazing Excel function called address. All you need to input is the column and row numbers and it will return you the cell address. As we know, the range required for count if is going to start from row number 2 and end on row number 10. So let us start. Equals address. Row number is 2 and the column number will vary based on the input from the drop down list. So let's use the match function to find out the column number. Lookup value being cell B12. Press the FO key to lock it in all directions. Lookup array. A1 to H1, again the FO key to lock it in all directions, and 0 because we are looking for an exact match. Click on cell B13 and observe the formula. We have managed to figure out the first part of our range. The second part is exactly the same, except the row number is 10 instead of 2. So click on cell E13 and copy the whole formula except the equals sign by pressing Ctrl C. Use ampersand the join operator. Put colon inside of double quotation marks. Again the ampersand and Ctrl V to paste the formula. Then change the row number from 2 to 10 and press enter. Click on cell B13 and observe both the ranges. Everything looks ok. The range that we have returned right now using the address function, even though it looks like a range reference, is nothing but text. For Excel to understand it as a range reference, we will have to wrap it with the indirect function. The indirect function converts a text string to a reference. That's all it does. Ignore the error as of now. Copy the formula and on cell B12, replace the range with the formula. Try selecting a different entry from the drop down list and see how the formula responds. That's perfect. I'll be making another video very soon on the same problem having a different solution. If you found this video useful, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Download the exercise file from my website www.needforexcel.com. See you soon.